As our coverage of Juneteenth continues this morning, our morning streaming manager Rabin is sharing her family story about her third great grandfather, Rust Jackson, and how he tried to move to Mexico during the 1800s, but ended up in Wharton, Texas. Rabin's aunt, Rosalind Newell, joins us this morning to tell us more about Rabin's great, great, great grandfather. Thank you so much for coming in on the show this morning. We do appreciate your time. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, it's always amazing to shed light on the personal connections that we have. And so I'm very thankful that Rabin has taken this opportunity to share uh, with us some of her history when it comes to um, Juneteenth. How did this happen? And what do you want people to know about Rust? Uh, he was born in 1830 in Georgia. I'm not sure how he got to Texas. <laughs> right. And he died in 1922, but he accomplished a lot in his lifetime. He and his family started off trying to move to Mexico, but on their way to Mexico from Warden, the wagons broke down, so half mm. of his family chose to stay in San Antonio, and the other half came back to Warden. And None he, of them made it to Mexico? No. No, because the wagons broke right. down and half the yep. family decided we we're going to stay in San Antonio and he brought his other half of his family back to Texas. What came of his life from that point on? Um, he managed to buy land in Warden, Texas and San Antonio and the family folklore said that he was going in and out of Mexico and whatever he was doing in Mexico he was paid in gold and he used that gold to buy land. The bulk of his land was in Warden, and he used that land to start a business as a cotton planter. And the family grew cotton from like 1865 to 1965. Oh, so wow. they did it for 100 years. They cultivated that land? Yes. Wow. And uh, according to the Edna newspaper from September 1877, he was listed as one of the principal cotton planters in Warden County. Isn't along that with uh, something? Which was a feat in itself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he was also the only African American to own his own cotton gin. And remnants of the cotton gin still stands in war. I was just going to ask what happened to that cotton gin? Parts uh, of it still standing. Parts of it still standing. You brought with you a photo that's been framed. Yes. Um, who are we seeing on the screen right now? Uh, that is my great great grandfather, Russ Jackson, and that's so his that's wife. Rust. Yes, okay. that's Russ and his wife. Okay. And uh, here is the photo of what is left of the cotton gin today. Yes, so if you go to Warden and you cross the railroad track, it's still there. Does it's your family still... own any of this land today? We, st we still own some of the land, yes. But not the original amount? No, the, the, original, the original amount uh, was actually sort of parallel to where Warden County Junior College is now. But we still own some, but not in that section of town, another section. Where, where we still farmed cotton up until 1965. Ms. Newell, what do you want people to know about Juneteenth? Um, I want to know that it was an exciting time. Uh, I'm sure everyone who was enslaved was happy to be free. Mm -hmm. And from that, they could choose their own life and which way their life is going to go and how successful they could be. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we so much appreciate your time this morning joining us here on KPRC 2 Plus Now. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.